Okay, welcome to your literacy lesson today. So our learning objective today is to recognise simple and compound sentences. And our, le our second learning objective is to write the problem or action section of your story. Okay, so to be successful you need to know what a compound and simple sentence is. Uh, I can write simple and compound sentences, or it says complex there, but it's compound sentences, and I can use them in my writing. So, to warm your brains up, here are lots and lots of villains uh, from different fairy tales. I'd like you to write a word bank, so that's um, and phrase bank, of different ways of describing these characters who are a little bit naughty. Pause the video, have a go. Okay, great. So you might want to use that today to help you uh, in your writing. So what we're going to do first of all is we're going to learn about uh, simple and compound sentences. To start with, let's learn what a simple sentence is. Let's start by looking at some simple sentences. So whenever you explore grammar, it's really important that you have a good grasp, good understanding of the various word classes. In today's lesson, we're going to be mainly dealing with verbs. So it's really important that we understand exactly what a verb is. Now, a verb is a doing or a being word. And I've given you four examples there. Jump, run, sing and think. I like your help identifying the verb in this sentence. The strange looking car drove down the street. Perhaps you could point to it for me or shout it out loud. The verb is drove. That's the thing the car is doing in this sentence. Here's another example. I thought the coast was clear when I stepped outside. Now in this sentence, there are actually two verbs. I wonder if you can spot them both. Pause the video and have a quick go. Okay, the two verbs are thought and stepped, two things being done in this sentence. We're going to use our understanding of verbs to help us understand a clause. So a clause is a group of words containing a verb. If you come across a group of words containing a verb, it's a clause. Here we have two options. One of these is a clause, one of them is not. Remember, a clause is a group of words containing a verb, so we're looking for a verb. Help me out. The children played in the park or a group of colourful birds. Which of these is a clause? Maybe you could point or shout out for me. OK. This one is the clause. This contains a verb. It contains the verb played, which is the past tense of to play. A group of colourful colour, colourful birds is not a clause, it doesn't contain a verb. This you would describe as a phrase. So, now we understand exactly what a clause is, let's think about a main clause. A main clause is a clause, a group of words containing a verb, that makes sense by itself. So if you say it by itself, if you say it out loud, it makes sense. It doesn't need the help of extra information or extra clauses in order to make sense. Here we have two options. One of these is a main clause. It makes sense by itself. One of them is not. I need your help deciding between the two. So we have, as the sun shone down and he relaxed in the garden. Which of these is a main clause and makes sense by itself? Point for me or shout out. Okay, this one is the main clause. Our other option, as the sun shone down, does not make sense by itself. That cannot stand alone as a main clause. He relaxed in the garden, on the other hand, does and can stand alone as a main clause. So, what we're going to do is we're going to use what we've just learned to see if we can figure out what a simple sentence is. Now, a simple sentence is related very closely to what we've just learned about main clauses. Here is a simple sentence. The fish swam towards the shore. Help 
me complete this definition using what we've just learned. A simple sentence consists of one mm -mm. It makes sense on its own. Pause the video and have a go. Okay, a simple sentence consists of one main clause. It makes sense on its own. So we know that main clauses can stand alone and make sense. When they do stand alone, as complete sentences, they form simple sentences. These we refer to as simple sentences. A simple sentence consists of one main clause and it makes sense on its own. Here we have a little picture of Batman. Now we use Batman to talk about Mr. Main. Mr. Main is our main clause. Now Mr. Main can go out and do things by itself just like Batman can. Batman doesn't need the help of a sidekick in order to go and do missions. He can go out by himself or he can go out on missions with other people. But the most important thing is that Mr. Main can do things all by himself. I'm just going to draw your attention to one element of this definition. One main clause. So a simple sentence consists of only one main clause, not more. Okay. Here we have three options. What we're going to do is read them out loud and then see if we can figure out which of these is a simple sentence consisting of one main clause. OK. Everybody cheered loudly and the crowd threw their arms in the air. The beautiful flowers in the garden. He ran over the bridge. There are three options. Only one of these is a simple sentence. Which one? Pause the video and have a go. OK, the simple sentence is he ran over the bridge. The other two are not. Let's think about why they're not. Everybody cheered loudly and the crowd threw their arms in the air. This sentence actually contains two main clauses. So it is not a simple sentence. Everybody cheered loudly. There's our first main clause. It makes sense by itself. And the crowd threw their arms in the air. That's our second main clause. It makes sense by itself. So this is not a simple sentence because it contains more than one main clause. The next option, the beautiful flowers in the garden, does not contain a verb. Therefore, it is not a clause. And therefore, it is not a simple sentence. He ran over the bridge, on the other hand, does contain a verb. Therefore, it's a clause and it makes sense by itself. Therefore, it's a main clause and there's only one of them. Therefore, it's a simple sentence. And here is all about compound sentences. OK, let's look at compound sentences. A compound sentence consists of two or more main clauses. Sometimes compound sentences are made up of more than two clauses. Normally, however, they're just made up of two main clauses. Here you can see I've depicted a compound sentence using Mr. Main plus Mr. Main. But what's joining them together? That's something we need to think about. Joining our two main clauses in a compound sentence is a coordinating conjunction. My turn, your turn. Coordinating conjunction. Coordinating injunction. When it comes to our coordinating conjunction, we have a choice of three. We refer to these as BOA words. BOA, made up of B, O and A, stands for the three coordinating conjunctions, but, or and and. I've used a snake picture here to depict BOA words because BOA is another word for a type of snake. You can see if you look closely at our three coordinating conjunctions, that but and or are preceded by a comma and, on the other hand, is not. But and or are preceded by a comma and is not. Let's see if we can identify which BOA word has been used in these sentences. The class played in the playground and the teacher sat on a bench. Which BOA word has been used here? Shout out for me. And the stars were glowing brightly, but there was not enough light to see. 
which BOA word has been used here. But, okay, now this BOA word, if you look carefully, is used to suggest contrast. So the stars were glowing brightly, so it was very bright in that sense. However, but there wasn't enough to see. So that's an element of contrast. We have the stars were growing bright, glowing brightly, but there wasn't enough to see. But is a really useful, but sometimes tricky conjunction to use. So you have to use it very carefully. We're going to see lots of examples today, so we'll get a feel for how to use it. Our next coordinated conjunction, we should leave now or we will become wetter and wetter. Which coordinated conjunction have I used here? Shout out for me. It's or. Now, or is another tricky conjunction to use. It's really useful, but it's harder than but and it's harder than and. You use or when you have some sort of cause followed by consequence. This should happen or this will happen. So here we should leave now or we will become wetter and wetter. That's the most common way to use or. Cause and consequence. OK, I wonder if you can help me figure out whether this sentence is a compound sentence made up of two main clauses or a simple sentence made up of one main clause. She saw something interesting in the distance. Hmm. I don't spot any boa words and I can only find one verb. So how does that help me? Hmm. Pause the video and have a go. OK, this is a simple sentence. We have one clause. It's a main clause. It makes sense by itself and therefore it is a simple sentence. How about with this one? They wanted to go to the park, but the sun was setting. Hmm. OK, I've spotted something which has given me a big clue here. I'd like you to have a go now. Pause the video. OK, this is a compound sentence. Of course it is. There's the word but. There's our BOA word. It's joining two main clauses. Let's check that they're main clauses by reading them out loud by themselves. If they make sense, then they're main clauses. They wanted to go to the park. Yep. The sun was setting. Yep. And what do we have in the middle? But, which is one of our BOA words. So definitely a compound sentence. OK, so now we've talked about uh, simple and compound sentences. I'm going to introduce our task for today. So we're going to write the action or problem section of your story. So you're going to write the next two paragraphs of your story. So I want you to... Um, these are some of the things I want you to include. So I want you to use compound and simple sentences to write the action section and include some speech between some characters. So I want you to use what we learnt on Thursday and Friday last week to write a little section of speech. Not lots and lots and lots, just a little section to show me that you can use speech to help your writing flow. And don't forget use to use all that descriptive language. OK, so here's my example. So I'm going to read it to you first of all, and then I'll explain some of the things that I've done. As soon as I found out that Belle was missing, I started to round up the whole village to search for her. My long lost love, the keeper of my heart, was missing. I felt a mixture of anger, worry and bravery. Most people work during the during the day, that's supposed to be, so we decided night time was the best time to go and search for her. As you can imagine, forests and woodlands are quite dark and creepy at night, so we needed torches and garden tools to help guide our way. To anyone walking by, I suppose we look rather menacing. Hey, LeFou, I said, do you, th do you not think with all the flames and forks and shouting we might look a bit scary? You look scary, Gaston. No one could ever think that, LeFou replied. I thought for a moment, then completely agreed. You are always right, my good friend. To the forest! Charge! And I said... We searched and searched through the forest of darkness, through thick fog, through the, through the gut-wrenching howls of the forest, climbing and scratching, we found our way out of the fearful, fascinerous forest. 
There in front of us was the monstrous haunted palace, overrun with evil. It looked like something out of my worst nightmare. Then I spotted her, my love, Belle, in the arms of the evil beast. With not a moment's hesitation, I ran. Dun, dun, dun. So let's have a look back through my work. So I've started with a kind of a fairy fairy tale um, style of language. So as soon as I found out that Belle was missing, I started to round up the whole village to search for her. So we started to think about um, this actual story, so the fairy tale of Beauty and the Beast, where he rounded up the village and they went searching. Um, and I've put my long lost love. So I've used alliteration here with three L's in a row. The keeper of my heart was missing. I felt a mixture of anger, worry and bravery. So I've got my power of three there that we talk about lots and lots. Most people work during the... So I'm start, started to think about what actually happened in the story. So why do they go at night? Well, it's because everyone was working. Um, as you can imagine, well, I've done my fronted adverbial. Forests and woodlands are quite dark and creepy at night. So we needed torches and garden tools to help guide our way. And then I've got another front of that, but to anyone walking by, I suppose we looked rather menacing. And then here I've got my speech, the way speech section. So I've only done three bits of speech, because that's all I needed, just to explain a little bit more of the story, and how it was actually LeFou's uh, fault, because he said that, I was, that Gaston was doing a great job. So, hey LeFou, I said. So I've got my, starts with my inverted commas, then I've got the, the bit that's being said, and then I've finished with my inverted comma. And I've got a piece of punctuation inside the inverted comma. My reported clause. And then I've finished. So I've done here. I've put my reported clause in the middle of my, um, in my speech. And I've got a question mark at the end. And then the inverted commas on the outside. So the bits that are being said are inside inverted commas. Okay, you can see that on all of those. And then you can see here, I put, instead of saying said, like I did on the first one, I put LeFou replied. Okay, and then here I've put my, um, my reporting clause, well, a little bit of explanation here, start, and then put the speech. I thought for a moment, then completely agreed. You are always right, my good friend. To the forest, a charge, and I put that in capital letters, cause, and then two exclamation marks to show that that's being shouted. Okay, and in my last sentence, we searched and searched. So I've got my simple sentence there. Through the forest of darkness, through the thick fog, through the gut-wrenching howls of the forest. Okay, so I've got my power of three there, but in a different style. So I've started, and that repetition, through, through, and through. Climbing and scratching, and lovely fronted adverbial there. Okay, with um, two verbs. We found our way out of the fearful, fascinous forest. And I've, I looked up. A better word for scary, and I found fascinous, and then I can use alliteration, F, 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 F fearful, fascinous forest. It sounds quite creepy, doesn't it? There in front of us was the monstrous haunted palace. We've got an expanded noun phrase there, overrun with evil. It looked like something out of my worst nightmare. And then right at the end here, then I spotted her, ellipsis, my love, Belle. In the arms of the evil beast, with not a moment's hesitation, I ran. So I've, done, I've got a mixture here of longer sentences and some quite short sentences. And you can see what that means. And then I've left it as a little bit of a cliffhanger at the end. With not a moment's hesitation, I ran. Du, du, du. What's going to happen next? So, good luck with your story. Now, you can see that I haven't quite got to the battle between... Um, between the beast and Gaston because I want to save that for my ending tomorrow. And it took me a long time to write all of this bit. I've, done, I've done, taken my time thinking about using some ambitious words like fascinous and monstrous. And so you can use the internet to find all of those bits. Try and use as many techniques as you can to make your writing exciting. Remember, the best writers steal as well. We magpie different ideas from other writers. So have a look in your storybooks. Try and find something that you could borrow for your story. I look forward to seeing your creative writing today.